So the di title is uh, how to read the CTG uh, pattern, uh, just the introduction. So uh, please, uh, Professor uh, Baba, uh, let, let you start the uh, lecture, please. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I'm Professor Baba. Uh, this is a map of Japan. Here, Tokyo, Nagoya, and Osaka. And Professor Tokuda and Professor Hara in Kanawa. And I'm speaking from Saitama, right next to Tokyo. I work for Saitama Medical Center of Saitama Medical University in Saitama. Uh, this is the Center for Maternal, Fetal, and Neonatal Medicine, the largest prenatal center in Japan. This slide shows NICU in our prenatal center. We have 60 beds in NICU. Most of premature babies, even born at 500 grams or at 24 weeks, survive and grow up. They happily gather with their parents to have a happy time. However, Babies like this photo are also in NICU. As you can see, this is an old photo, not a current one. Uh, this several months old baby had a serious brain disorder due to hypoxia during labor. Uh, this baby was born at another hospital and had been transported to our center due to neonatal asphyxia. The main point of my talk is for safe delivery or how to prevent brain damage during labor. As you know, fetuses tend to become hypoxic uh, during labor. If the hypoxia is severe, the baby will die or will have a permanent brain disorder. What can we do to prevent a baby's death or brain damage caused by hypoxia during labor? First, uh, monitoring of oxygen concentration in the fetal blood continuously and proper interventions should be done immediately when an abnormality occurs. Pulse oximeters are widely used, uh, used to measure oxygen saturation level in the blood non-invasively and continuously. However, a pulse oximeter cannot be attached to a fetus in the uterus. There's no way to measure the fetal blood oxygen concentration non-invasively, continuously, and real-timely. Cardiotopographs or electric fetal monitors are used worldwide instead of pulse oximeters. Why? As you know, the cardiovascular center in the brain regulates heart rate through the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system. The sympathetic system increases heart rate and the parasympathetic system decreases heart rate. The cardiovascular center decides to increase or decrease heart rate according to the signals from uh, chemoreceptors and baroreceptors and the cerebrum. That means heart rate is controlled by blood gas concentration, blood pressure, and the cerebrum. By monitoring fetal heart rate, also indirectly, we can see whether the fetus is hypoxic or not, and whether the brain is working normally or not. Cardiotocographs are used not only during labor, but also during pregnancy. First, I'd like to talk about CTG during labor. This slide shows an example of CTG during labor. Upper curve represents a fetal heart rate and the lower curve uh, represents uh, uterine contraction. Japan Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology recommends a paper speed of uh, three, three centimeter per minute. This slide shows a typical normal CTG during labor. A normal CTG means that the fetus is in good condition, no hypoxia, no metabolic acidosis, and the central nervous system is working properly. When four conditions are met, the CTG is just to be normal. What are the four conditions? 
uh, there are relatively stable period here and here. And also you see also uh, some uh, transient changes here and here. First, pay attention to the relatively stable period magnified. Uh, the heart rate is not uh, constant, but uh, slightly goes up and go down. The average heart rate in this uh, relatively st uh, stable period is called baseline fetal heart rate. When you judge the baseline, approximate average heart rate during 10 minutes segment is bounded to the nearest five beat, beat, uh, five beat per minute increment. In this case, the baseline is 140 ppm, not 141 or 139. A normal range of baseline is uh, 110 to 160 BPM. And this is the first condition for a normal CTG. Next, look at this fluctuation of the heart rate. This fluctua uh, fluctuation is called variability. Variability is evaluated it, uh, by its amplitude. And the normal range of variability is 6 to 25 BPM. Variability in this normal range is called moderate variability. The second condition for a normal CT is uh, existence of no, uh, moderate variability. Why is moderate variability important to judge that, uh, to judge that the fetus is in good condition? You remember that uh, heart rate is controlled by the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems. Uh, when the heart rate goes up a little bit, uh, the parasympathetic system works to decrease heart rate. And the heart rate goes down excessively, the sympathetic system works to increase it. So moderate variability indicates uh, both the uh, cardiovascular center in the brain and the nervous systems are working normally. The third condition for normal CTG is existence of accelerations. An acceleration is an abrupt and uh, uh, transient increase of heart rate. What does an acceleration mean? Baby! Uh, some of you might be surprised and your heart rate goes up a little bit in response to the sound. Uh, that is an, an access acceleration. An acceleration shows that the brain reacts to a stimulation and increases heart rate through the cardiovascular center. That means the brain is working properly. A stimulation causing an acceleration may be a uterine contraction, a fetal movement, or unknown origin. Anyway, the existence of accelerations uh, is a good sign. An abrupt and transient increase of heart rate is considered as an acceleration. When the increase of the heart rate is uh, 15 BPM or more from the baseline and lasts 15 seconds or longer, uh, six, uh, 15 by 15. Uh, for fetus less than 32 weeks of gestation, 10 BPM or more, and 10 seconds or longer, 10 by 10 for fetus uh, less than 32 weeks of gestation. The fourth condition for a normal CTG is that there's no deceleration. Uh, I will talk about deceleration later. To summarize a normal CTG, a CTG is considered normal if the uh, CTG meets uh, four, all four conditions. Baseline is between 110 and 160 BPM. There's moderate variability. That is the uh, amplitude is between uh, six to 25 BPM. And there's, uh, uh, there are accelerations and there's no deceleration or uh, decelerations. Uh, deceleration is a uh, drop in heart rate. 
It needs more than 15 BPM below the baseline and needs lasting more than 50 seconds or uh, 50 seconds uh, to be considered as a deceleration. There are four types of decelerations. An early deceleration, a late deceleration, a variable deceleration, and a prolonged deceleration. Uh, let's see each of them. This slide shows on the decelerations. Uh, fetal heart rate goes down gradually or slowly and return to the baseline uh, gradually, according to the routine contraction. An important point is that the bottom of the deceleration accord with uh, the peak of the routine contraction. This type of deceleration is called an early deceleration. An early deceleration is thought to be uh, caused by fetal head compression. When the uterus contracts, the fetus is pushed and the fetal head is compressed. The pressure is transmitted in the fetal brain because, as you know, the cranial bones of a, fe of a fetus are not fixed. The pressure stimulates the fetal brain directly. The parasympathetic system reacts to the pressure stimulation more than the sympathetic system, resulting in the deceleration. We see early deceleration often after the, around the end of the first stage of labor just before the cervix is dilated to 10 cm. An early deceleration is a benign deceleration. It does not relevant to hypoxia or metabolic acidosis. These decelerations are similar to early decelerations. The heart rate goes down gradually and returns gradually. But this is an abnormal CTG pattern. A deceleration begins uh, after the routine contraction begins, and the nadir of the heart rate comes after the peak of the routine contraction. Heart rate returns to the baseline after the contraction is over. Uh, this type of deceleration is called a red deceleration, and it is uh, one of uh, abnormal CTG patterns. I will explain briefly a mechanism of a lead deceleration. Uh, before routine contraction begins, the maternal blood goes to the placenta, and there is, uh, there is enough oxygen both in placenta and the fetus. So heart rate is in normal range. When the routine contracts, Blood vessels in the uterine muscles are compressed. Uh, that means the maternal blood flow to the placenta decrease and the oxygen concentration in the placenta decrease. But the oxygen concentration in the fetus is still maintained at this point. Fetal blood with insufficient uh, oxygen goes into the fetus uh, through the umbilical vein and oxygen concentration in the fetus decreases gradually. Chemoreceptors in the fetus react to the change of the blood gas concentration, and that information is transfer, uh, transferred to the cardiovascular center, and the heart rate goes down. When the uterine contraction subsides, uh, maternal blood flow in the uterine muscle uh, recovers and the oxygen is supplied to the placenta again. But oxygen does not go to the fetus immediately. It takes time. Oxygen concentration uh, in the umbilical vein and the fetus is still low and the heart rate does not recover. After the routine contraction is over, fetal blood with sufficient oxygen uh, goes into the fetus and the heart rate goes up gradually. Finally, uh, heart rate returns to the baseline. 
This is a mechanism of a uh, red deceleration. A uh, red deceleration is an uh, abnormal CTG pattern. And in most of normal cases, there's no red deceleration. Why not in normal cases? That's because the uh, chemical receptor does not react unless oxygen concentration exceeds its threshold level. Even in a normal fetus, oxygen concentration in a fetal blood decreases uh, due to uterine contractions, but it doesn't reach the threshold level. That's why there's no red deceleration in normal cases. In contrast, in a fetus, in that uh, oxygen concentration is very low, even before uterine contraction. Oxygen, concent uh, oxygen concentration is easy to go below the threshold level, and the rate of deceleration appears. In other words, rate deceleration are caused by utero placenta uh, insufficiency. Uh, the second abnormal CT pattern is a variable deceleration. Both in an early deceleration and a red deceleration, heart rate uh, be, uh, decrease and return gradually. But in a variable deceleration, the change of heart rate is abrupt. Heart rate go down suddenly and return sharply. And the size and the shape are different each time, uh, what causes uh, variable deceleration. Uh, variable deceleration is caused by compression of the umbilical cord. What happens uh, when the umbilical cord is compressed? When the umbilical cord is compressed, uh, fetal blood pressure goes up immediately because the fetal uh, blood does not go to the placenta smoothly through the umbilical cord. Then bar receptor react, and that information is Im immediately transmitted to the cardiovascular center. Through the uh, parasympathetic system, the cardiovascular center decreases heart rate abruptly. When the cold compression is relieved, uh, fetal blood flow to the placenta re uh, resumes, and the fetal blood pressure returns to the normal level immediately, and the heart rate returns to the baseline rapidly. The third abnormal CTG pattern is a prolonged deceleration. An early deceleration, a late deceleration, and a variable deceleration do not exceed two minutes. If your deceleration lasts two minutes and or more and return to the baseline within 10 minutes, it is called a prolonged deceleration. It may be a severe deceleration of a late or a variable deceleration. Uh, you should pay attention not only to heart rate, but also uh, to the uterine contraction curve in such a case. Usually, a uterine uh, contraction does not last over 90 seconds. In this case, an abnormal uh, uterine contraction causes a prolonged deceleration. If a deceleration lasts 10 minutes or more, it is not a des uh, deceleration, but the baseline has shifted. When the baseline is below 110 BPM, it is called a bradycardia. And this is a fourth abnormal CTG pattern. During bradycardia, fetal placenta circulation is reduced. That means that uh, fetus cannot, you know, cannot receive fast, uh, sufficient oxygen from the placenta and the fetus will become more and more hypoxic. You should consider immediate intervention to prevent fetal death or permanent brain damage, especially when the baseline is below 80 BPM. Uh, how about uh, tachycardia? The baseline is over 160 BPM. This is an abnormal CTG pattern but not so severe. Uh, tachycardia may be a sign of uh, mild hypoxia. 
the cardiovascular center may be increasing heart rate to supply sub, uh, sufficient oxygen to the brain. But do not forget, the most common cause of tachycardia is maternal pyremia. So check maternal fever first when you see fetal tachycardia. As you remember, uh, moderate uh, variability is important for a normal CTG. The fifth abnormal CTG pattern is uh, undetectable or minimal uh, variability. Uh, left heart rate curve uh, looks like a straight flat line. This is called undetectable or absent variability. It's also called loss of variability. Uh, right heart rate curve shows uh, variability, but amplitude is 5 BPM or less. Uh, this is called minimal or reduced variability. When both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic systems are not working properly due to hypoxia or metabolic acidosis, heart rate does not fluctuate. Especially these four CTG patterns indicate very bad condition and the emergency intervention is needed, such as cesarean section, forceps delivery, or vacuum extraction. Uh, repeated uh, lead deceleration with uh, loss of variability. Uh, repeated variability, uh, variable decelerations with loss of variability. A prolonged deceleration with loss of variability. And uh, severe bradycardia, uh, which means the uh, baseline is under 80 BPM with loss of variability or minimal variability. If you see one of these patterns, you should give birth to the fetus as soon as possible. Uh, one more abnormal CTG pattern is a unique pattern like this. It looks uh, a regular smooth sine wave with no acceleration. Uh, lasting more than 10 minutes, uh, frequency is two to six cycles per minute. Amplitude is usually five to 15 BPM. Uh, this is called sinusoidal pattern. Sinusoidal pattern is, uh, uh, is seen in case of severe fetal anemia and fetal hypox uh, hypoxia. Next, CTD during pregnancy. It is called non-stress test or NST uh, because it is a test without the stress of uh, uterine contractions. Main purpose of the NST is to evaluate the fetal condition just as in CTG in labor. Uh, the other purpose is to check routine contraction in cases of a threatened premature labor. The conditions for normal CTG during pregnancy are the same as those for normal CTG in labor. Plus, uh, no routine contraction. So five conditions during, uh, during pregnancy. Uh, look at this CTG during pregnancy. Uh, baseline is 100, 140 BPM. It is normal. Uh, no deceleration. It is normal. But variability is minimal and no acceleration. These are not normal. Is this an abnormal CTG? Uh, you should know that the variability and the acceleration are suppressed when the fetus is sleeping deeply. So do not evaluate uh, variability and acceleration during deep sleeping period. We usually do NST for 40 minutes to avoid deep sleeping period because the uh, fetus sleeps and gets up every 20 to 40 minutes. Uh, precaution of NST result interpret uh, interpretation. The result of an NST is normal. Uh, then fetal well-being is good. That is true. The result of NST is not normal. Or well, for a uh, few of the four conditions for normal fetal heart rate are not met, then fetal well-being is bad. No, it is not true. Actually, some of them are good 
and some of them are bad, but you cannot distinguish them exactly. Uh, this figure illustrates the condition of uh, fetal uh, condition of fetus, uh, so-called well-being. Green area represents good condition, uh, red area represents uh, bad condition, and the yellow area represents middle condition. Uh, normal NSC cases are in the part of the green area. And some of not normal cases are also in the green area. So basically, NST is a test for reassuring about the fetal condition, not for detecting fetal distress. In NST, a uh, red deceleration, a uh, variable deceleration, a uh, prolonged deceleration, and bradycardia are uh, abnormal patterns too. Especially in NST, be careful not to overlook a small drip, drop of heart rate. This is a very shallow deceleration and very weak within contraction, but it is a pattern of a red deceleration. The fetal condition is considered very bad because even such a weak uh, contraction causes uh, lead deceleration. I will show you how CTG changes as hypoxia and metabolic acidosis get worse in the next two slides. First, uh, lead decelerations appear, but both variability and acceleration are uh, maintained. Next, acceleration is disappear, but variability is maintained. Getting worse, variability is reduced. And finally, uh, variability is undetectable or loss of variability. It's a typical cause of CTG change as hypoxia and metabolic acidosis get worse. But there are many exceptions. I'd like to say one last word. Listening to the fetal heart tone is important. It is true. But more important thing is seeing cardio, uh, cardio tocogram. Why? Because you can distinguish an early deceleration a benign deceleration from a late deceleration and an abnormal deceleration by seeing CTG. But you cannot distinguish them by only listening to the fetal heart tone. And because you can distinguish normal variability and loss of variability by seeing CTG, but you cannot distinguish them by only listening to the fetal heart tone. And you probably overlook uh, a shallow lead deceleration without seeing, uh, lead, uh, seeing CTG. Therefore, it is very important to see CTG with your own eyes. My today's talk is for smiles of babies and their families. Please make good use of CTG. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Baba. Uh, it, it was a wonderful uh, lecture. So it's very easy to understand, such as myself, uh, not for the specialist for the uh, OBGY. So, and uh, next. Uh, so also, if you uh, anybody has uh, any questions, so please write a question in the chat box. So we are going to uh, answer the later on. So, uh, so now uh, I would like to show another promotion video. So, uh, Professor Hala Sensei, uh, have you got any comment on the video? Ah, oh, okay. So. Uh, let me share the, uh, another video. This is uh, the uh, some kind of uh, telemedicine uh, video. So drone-based e-health and remote medication at the remote island in Japan. Uh, of course, it's uh, in Kagawa Prefecture. And 
probably maybe you you will have some uh, idea from this video. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, wait for a moment. Can you show the screen? So, okay, let me start. この度国立大学法人香川大学株式会社カモメや愛おい日清童話損害保険株式会社は医療と物流の地域課題の解決をテーマに遠隔診療と個人ドローン配送に関する実証実験を実施しましたこの実証実験において香川大学は遠隔診療やドローン輸送に資する医学的知見、工学的知見の提供をカモメアは無人ドローン技術の提供を当社は第三者への損害賠償や機械損傷など実証実験中のリスクに備え必要な保険のコンサルティングや提供を行い運営主体として全体の取りまとめを行いましたそれでは実証実験の映像をご覧ください実証実験の舞台は、香川県三豊市の淡島。人口はおよそ200人で、本島へは定期船で移動しています。住民の約 75% が70歳以上であり、高齢化が進んでいることから、医療体制の整備が喫緊の課題となっています。ここは、淡島唯一の診療所です。週に2回、本島から医師が派遣され、診療を行っています。今回診療所では対応できない休館が訪れた設定で遠隔診療のテストを行いました。当該患者は不整脈や胸の痛みを訴えたため、心電図の検査が必要でしたが、診療所では対応ができません。淡島診療所です。お世話になります。すいません。えっ、ー、と、山北さんがおいでて、朝から今日はめまい、息苦しさ、動悸とか不整脈があって、どうも体調が悪いんですけど、って言うんですけど、オンライン診療よろしいでしょうか。そうですね。はい。はい。あ、はい、よろしくお願いします。山北さん、昨日まで元気だったようなんですけども、どんな調子ですか。そうなんですが、先生ね、なんか今日朝起きると、なんかこう、頭がふらふらっとするして。なんかこうめまいもするような感じするから、これは、ちゃんとこう早く行って見てもらわれかんとってやってきて、心臓でもなんかこうおかしいんじゃないかいなと思ったけど、じゃあ、看護師さん、血圧計をちょっとつけてみていただけますか。はい今早かった。早かったら遅かったりしてます。はい、今血圧計で山北さんの脈拍を見ていたんですけれども。まあ以前と違って、かなり不規則なところがあるので。その不規則の感じから言うと、心房か再度の可能性は高いんですけれども。しかし正確な診断のためには、やはり心電図で、あの診断しないと。まあ、お薬も出せないのでこれからあのドローンでえーあのモバイルの心電計をそちらに送りますがまあ30分後ぐらいに届きますけれども使っていただけますかはいじゃあよろしくお願いしますそれからですね確か去年あの再生丸で取った健康診断の時に取った心電図こちらで k m x プラスで見えるので見てみますとあのー、非常に心拍数は等間隔で要するに去年は去年の健康診断では心房細動はなかったということで、まあ、最近になったんじゃないかなと思いますけれども、まあ、その確定診断のためにあの送りますのでもう少しお待ちそこで本島の松井病院からモバイル心電計ジュランタをドローンにて配送し検査を行うことにしました。こちらが本島の松井病院です。淡島の診療所からモバイル心電計のドローン配送を依頼されました。本島からドローンは無人飛行を始めます
。また、離発着ポイントには、気象ライブシステムが設置され、安全に飛行できる環境をリアルタイムで判断することができます。当ドローンは 5kg まで荷物が積載でき、時速 50km で飛行が可能です。また、ドローンが危険を察知した場合は、緊急作動装置が発動、事故を未然に防ぎます。本島から淡島の 4.3km を飛行し、およそ10分で到着しました。無人ドローンを活用することで、急を要する物品の迅速な配送が可能となります。ドローンで配送されたモバイル心電計を使い、遠隔診療を再開します心電図こちらにもちゃんと届いてますよやっぱり感覚が、はいはいはい、心臓の動きが非常に不整脈が強くてはいありがとうございますやっぱり心房細動ですねこれはあの血液をさらさらする薬飲まないとダメなのでああ、はい、あでこのデュランタを送るときにあの一緒に血液をサラサラするエリキュースという薬もドローンで一緒に送ってますのでこれからそれを飲んでもらうんですけども一応そちらで採血した血液を帰りのドローンに乗せていただいてでこちら松井病院で調べて異常なければお薬を飲む方向になりますけどよろしいでしょうか結構です、はい、お願いいたしますいやほ本当典型的なしんあの心房細動です。じゃあよろしくお願いします。モバイル端末を活用することで本島の医師が心電図をリアルタイムで確認することが可能になります。これにより詳細な診断を受け薬を処方されました。山北さんこんにちは。こんにちは。はじめまして。あの以前、あの淡島新生大学でお薬の勉強をさせていただきました、薬剤師の新見と申しますあそうですか、すなんかこう、はい、見たことあるなぁような感じでやった、そうですか、はいはいはい、あの先ほどの血液検査では大きな異常はなかったようです。あそうですかですがあのはいですがあの、心房細動という診断が出たということで、うん、あのちょっと心房の中で血の塊ができやすい状態になっておりますので、はいはい、今回、はいはい、今回あの血を固まりにくくして、血栓があのできないようにするお薬が出ておりますあそうですか、はいあの。こちら、エリキュースというお薬なんですけれども。はい、あの血の流れを良くして、はい、あのちあの血管が詰まるのを抑える作用があります。はあ。はい。であの飲み方は、はい、こちら一日二回、朝晩食後に一回に一錠ずつ飲まれてください。はい、わ、はい、かりました。食事が食べなくてもあの飲んで構いませんので、なるべく毎日あの同じ時間帯に服用するようにしてください。はい、わかりました。はい、あのそしてあの服用中はあの血が出るとちょっと血が止まりにくくなりますので,、うんああですね、あの歯医者さんに行かれる時などは、はいはいはい、先生の方に必ずあああのエリキュースを飲んでいるということを伝えるようにしてくださいね。はいはいはいはいこの名前はね、このエリキュン、このエ、ここの、このエリを覚えてたら、わかるよりね、エリキュンという。あ、そうですね。<笑>はい、そう思います。そうね。これ、ちょっと、もっとこう大きなような感じを受ける、ちっちゃい、これで聞くんじゃろうな。筒がちっちゃいけど、はいあのーうん、もう十分効果のある薬で。あ、そうですか。はい、はい。<笑>はい、あの、安心して飲まれてください。うん、はい、ありがとうございます。あの、こちらの方に、あの、お薬の詳しい説明が、が載ってますので。ああの目を通されるようにしてください。はい、ありがとうございます。そしてあの例えばあの異常な出血があるなど、ちょっと気になるようなことがありましたら、はい、あの必ず先生の方に報告するようにされてください、ね。はい、はい、そうします。はい、ではお大事になさってください。はい、どうもありがとうございました。よろしくお願いします。はい。
、医薬品もドローン配送することで、迅速な医療体制の構築が可能となります。また、血液検査が必要な場合も、ドローンを活用し、本島での検査が可能となります。老化が進んで人も少なくなった状態でもう住んどる人はもう本当にいろいろと心配してるんですけど一番心配しているのはもうあのこういうような病気でそういうような状態で、えー、原先生がこ,うこんな便利な獲物をあの発明しようかということをしていただいて本当に我々を助かっておりますそしてまたドローンとかいうもののこの便利なものまでこれでまた薬を送っていただくことこんなあ,のありがたいことはないと思いますただいまあのご覧になってご理解いただいたと思いますけれども、まあ、非常に簡単なテレビ画キステム等を導入しますと非常に正確なあの診療ができます、まあ、その際一番重要なことは単に顔を見て元気ですねとかいうそういった診断法ではなくて心電図とか血圧とかあるいは脈拍まあ、そういったものをあのきっちりとリアルタイムで送るようにしてそして初めて正確な診断ができると思ってます当社の技術は物流だけではなく災害時の人命救助や遠隔医療における医薬品輸送などさまざまな用途でご活用いただけますドローンにより人のつながりを強め地域課題の解決にお役立ていただけるよう取り組んでまいります Uh, thank you for watching the、uh, promotion video.、Uh, this video、uh, is uh, promoted by, by、uh, Professor Hara. So, if you have、uh, any q u e s t i o n about the, this video,、uh, I put the link of the video on, in the chat box. So, you could、uh, copy it and uh, uh, you could see later on. So, also,、uh, so we Uh, happy to have uh, uh, any q u e s t i o n uh, but uh, uh, for now, so there are no、uh, q u e s t i o n on the、uh, chat box. So, if you have any questions, so just raise your hand and uh, uh, turn on the, your mic and uh, please uh, ask the, any doctor, any professor. Any q u e s t i o n Okay. Okay. So, any or any comment? I, I think、uh, probably they want to make question, but uh, uh, to make a question the very、uh, beginning, a l i t t bit, you know, <laughs> they, they will be hesitate that. <laughs> so, I, I think that this is a very uh, uh, nice system、uh, which can be introduced in any countries, especially、uh, you know, South Asian countries uh, uh, from which uh, uh, country to, you know, we have a participant today. So, please think, think about okay, if、uh, You will introduce this、uh, mobile CTG, ICTG, into your country. What, what can happen? You know, it's quite an、uh, exciting thing. So,、uh, well, then, you know, okay, how I, I, can, can we introduce the, that to our country? You know, so, you know, from that, you know, any, any kind of uh, uh, question or comment, and,、uh, you know,、uh, welcome. So,、uh, Please, you know. <laughs> Today、uh, we have many participants from Bhutan, and then so,、uh, you know, we'll,、uh, we welcome questions from Bhutan. And we have some、uh, doctors from China and、uh, Cambodia, Myanmar, right? And so,、uh, yeah, let's use、uh, this opportunity efficiently. The Professor Baba and Professor Hala, they are two、uh, distinguished、uh, professors in this field. So, please. <laughs> <laughs>、uh...
maybe everybody so shy and uh... oh someone is saying something okay i have a question to you uh hara sensei professor hara showed the uh, kind of a combination of uh, uh drone and the medical uh, equipment ecz so uh, of course that uh, probably mobile cities ictz is also you know possible to to bring the you know the drone, so I'm just wondering in uh, in Bhutan is the is drone very popular? So we, we can use drone in Bhutan or in Myanmar. Please ask to my question. <laughs> yes. About Doctor Nishizawa Sensei or. Maybe the, in, in, in uh, Bhutan, there at this moment, kind of some another uh, session is going on. So, okay. Uh, yes. Anybody uh, any questions? Yes, may I? Uh, <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, this is Dr. Yoriko Nishizawa from Bhutan. And uh, thank you so much, uh, the uh, eminent speakers uh, from Japan, sharing your experience of uh, CTG. And I have one question. Uh, uh, before maybe I ask my question, that maybe I have to answer the uh, questions from uh, Professor Tokuda regarding the drone usage in Bhutan. At the moment, as of my knowledge, the drone is not introduced yet, uh, although there is a need of using uh, because of the challenging geographical terrain. But at the moment, we are not using any uh, drone. But we have a helicopter service, uh, which also uh, uh, having multi purpose, uh, such as evacuating the patients and uh, having some logistics support and all. Uh, when it comes to my uh, questions that uh, these days WHO alert increasing number of caesarean section in the world. And I'm wondering uh, how we can balance uh, using the CTG without increasing the number of caesarean sections. So if uh, one of the speaker kindly answer my question. リンリンあ、徳田先生なんか。あ、これまあ、ババ先生か、あの、原先生がどちらか。はい。帝王帝王切開に関係することなんで、はい。ババ先生お願いします。ババ先生なんか、CTGの利用で帝王切開が増える
uh, in in Bhutan. So uh, would you please help us to you know uh, to prove the the Professor Baba said like uh, not like uh, WHO says. Okay, thank you. There are two questions. Ah uh, yes. In memo. So from the first one is from Professor Tsui, uh, Hebei Medical Uni University. Right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, to visit Hebei he Medical University after the call. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We are happy to visit uh, your university. And uh, Professor Tsui. <clears throat> and uh, next one is from Bhutan, right? CTZ facility is available only in hospital. Yes, uh, it is only available in hospital. That's why we developed this uh, ICTZ, right? Which can uh, uh, easily carry to anywhere, right? And then where there are uh, gynecologists, can you comment about the role of CTZ in the health center, health centers without the gynecologist, but with the general doctors? Mm -hmm. Oh, very, very uh, important question. Uh, Professor Hala? Yeah, I think uh, mobile CTZ can be used not only in the hospital, but uh, of course, uh, in clinic, where uh, OBGI doctor is not there, we can use this system only by, on, even if uh, nurse or midwives only were there, we can use this system. I, I hope to introduce in such area our system. Uh, a mobile system. And uh, in Japan also, at first, uh, se uh, unnecessary cesarean section uh, goes up uh, at first. However, uh, correct diagnosis, very important to reduce such unnecessary cesarean section. How do you think, how about, I think Professor Baba think also the same. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Late deceleration and early deceleration is, is different. That is very important. Hara sensei, uh, to the uh, second question from Bhutan. I think uh, uh, it says that. Uh, uh, hmm? Yeah, so uh, uh, in the centers, in the health centers, we are gynecologists, but with uh, general doctors. Of course, you know, if uh, general doctors are there, uh, it's of course it's good, but uh, even, even if. Uh, no doctors are there in the health center, just uh, nurses. It is, you know, it is okay. okay. Uh, it very is very, important. yeah, very easy, Convenient. very easy to set this, uh, you know, the uh, monitor, right, on the uh, pregnant women's abdomen. Yes. So uh, the, then the signal can be transferred, right, through internet to the uh, uh, gynecologists who are in, in the city. Uh, so, you know, can make diagnosis. So, and then e even the pregnant women, you know, themselves, herself, if uh, they learn a little bit, you know, how to use it, they can do it by themselves. Right, Professor Allah? Yes. Mm. Yes. I think, uh, yes, this is exactly the case in, in Chiang Mai. So, any anybody from Chiang Mai? <laughs> Can you explain the project? Sadiha. Sadiha. Okay. Uh, maybe it's very 
had to do here because of the network. Okay. Maybe, uh, yes, uh, the, some lack of the network uh, connection. So later on, we can uh, send uh, some uh, summary of the project in Chennai uh, by email because you, when you uh, apply this uh, session, uh, we've got the, your email. So uh, in, uh, we are going to send the case of the Chennai. So in Chennai, uh, 25 uh, public hospital there are, and then uh, in that 19 hospital is uh, only a midwife and the general doctor there. So it means there is no uh, gynecologist. So, but the, our uh, Puti CTG installed all the hospital and then data uh, sent to the uh, other hospital, which, which means uh, the, the hospital with, with gynecologist and OBGY doctor. So it's exactly working in, in Chiang Mai uh, without the uh, OBGY doctor, so with uh, CTG. So uh, the question uh, from the uh, Bhutan, uh, I think it's yes, uh, but uh, we have to still think about the, uh, the internet connection in that area. So the, this kind of device uh, depending on the uh, connection. So uh, we are going to uh, try that uh, project in near future. So let us so involved, please. And uh, Dr. Pema Sensei, uh, Uh, do you recommend continuous fetal monitoring with CTG or intermittent fetal monitoring for women undergoing introduction of labor and during labor in low resource country to improve neonatal outcome? うん。あ、先生どうでしょう。えっと、質問コーナー。よし。プロフェッサーハラ。よ。え Intermittent, uh, I think uh, continuous monitoring is uh, necessary for delivery. Yeah. However, during pregnancy, about 20 to 40 minutes intermittent uh, test is enough, enough, I think. How about Baba, Professor Baba? Oh, yes, uh, Japan Society of Japan, uh, Japan Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology recommends uh, uh, continuous uh, uh, continuous monitoring during the induction labor. Japan Society and also the Japan Association of OBGYN recommends uh, continuous uh, monitoring uh, uh, under the no no. <clears throat> pregnant women uh, undergoing uh, induction of labor. And also, I, uh, to, I will tell you the Dr. Dan Mai Gai from Bhutan, the role of CTG in the health center without gynecologist. Yes, it's very important. Uh, that's because uh, even if the low risk pregnancy, uh, the fetus will easily to uh, distress. So the, uh, even if the low risk uh, pregnancy, uh, the CTG is very important to find out the uh, baby uh, risk at risk. Uh, 
。ありがとうございます。Okay, so and、uh, another question from Dr. Nishizawa. This is just a comment that, that、uh, to reply to the Dhammaya,、uh, to just to comment that the gynecologist can advise to apply ICTG if the maternal condition suggests compromising the fetal well being. And data can be interpreted by gynecologists remotely using ICTG. As the data can be shared by, via mobile network. So that was I, just to supplement what the、uh, professors、uh, explained to us. Okay. Thank you,、uh, Dr.、Uh, Nishizawa sensei. So, okay,、uh, we got、uh, plenty of questions, but if we, you have any other questions, so、uh, we are going to send the email to you uh, with the. Uh, 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 Link of the YouTube, and、uh, we we had recorded this、uh, session. So,、uh, after we prepared the, the, this record, so we are going to send an email with the, all the link. So, then you can、uh, reply the,、uh, some q u e s t i o n to the doctor. So, we、uh, we pass to the、um, email to the doctor,、uh, Professor Baba and、uh, Hara. So, thank you. So, we are running out of the time almost. So, if you have any other, you haven't got any other question. Okay. So, finally, so we are finishing、uh, this session. And uh, please, uh, Professor Tokuda, please、uh, wrap up, summarize the, this webinar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, uh, I hope you understand that this、uh, ICTC mobile CDD is very small but very powerful in the、uh, rural area, okay, where many pregnant women are、uh, living with uh, uh, having a specialist, so we can help them. And we learned a lot from uh, our uh, uh, trial in Chiang Mai, Thailand, that uh, uh, in the village where no doctors are present,、uh, we, we can just carry it and then、uh, can monitor you know, pregnant women's condition very well. So, in the whole Chiang Mai province,、uh, with the collaboration of、uh, Chiang Mai、uh, Ministry of Public Health and Chiang Mai University, we are uh, doing uh, uh, very well. And then, the, probably, next step is to be the, this project in whole Thailand, whole country. We can do similarly. In the other countries, such as Bhutan, Myanmar, Indonesia, and Myanmar, China. Okay, so、uh, we are happy、uh, to accept the offer of the、uh, possible collaboration from you. And then,、uh, you know, recently, well, COVID 19 pandemic. Uh, in all over the world, right? Then、uh, we learn this uh, uh, technology, mobile CTZ, ICTZ.、Uh, you know, if、uh, the pregnant woman ha has it at home, she doesn't have to go to the hospital. She can stay at home. Then just uh, uh, periodically can、uh, monitor the pregnancy by putting this、uh, instrument. And send the signal to the、uh, specialist doctors who are in the hospital. So、uh, he, he or she can、uh, give、uh, appropriate advice to the pregnant women. And、uh, oh, I forgot one thing、uh, which la we learned from the、uh, Chiang Mai.、Uh, the, they, they used、uh, this ICTG、uh, when they、uh, transfer the patient uh, to the uh, upper level hospital. You know, so、uh, in the、uh, ambulance car, they, they use this、uh, mobile ICTZ to continuously monitor 
the condition of the pregnancy. So that really helps. So the doctors uh, can wait for the uh, uh, pregnant women and at the hospital and can prepare because you know they can know the condition you know the real time. So this really helps a lot. So the, we can use this uh, ICTG for such kind of purpose, especially for the emergency purpose. Okay. So uh, we are looking forward to working with you in the future. And then uh, we will uh, probably provide uh, uh, another uh, uh, webinar. Uh, and then uh, we, we can uh, work and we can learn you know together in the future as well okay so uh thank you very much uh for your participation today and again we are looking forward to work with you in the future thank you very much thank you uh professor tokuda so uh this is i guess the, that will be uh, all for today so thank you for participating the us so Please see you next time.